Hello, DJ. How are you today? I am doing well. How are you? I am also well. Thank you for asking. And space oh. and Spacey, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, Eric. Well, that's wonderful. Well, we're, we are all doing well and happy to be here. So, DJ, we normally ask the first question that we ask is, can you tell us a little bit about your background in typology? How much do you know coming in? How much, how certain are you already of your type? Don't tell us what you think it might be, but if you're like debating between two types, something okay. like that. So, as far as typology goes, I've been studying typology for probably, probably seriously for the past six months now, but I've probably been studying it for the past year. And I'm fairly convinced of my type. I think there's types that I potentially could be, but I'm, I'm pretty certain. But I wanted to get some of these more knowledge to verify <laughs> okay um so if I were to knock on your door right now and say DJ it's late Saturday afternoon early Saturday evening I've got good news I got a raging kegger down the street people are partying <laughs> hard they're they're dancing they're uh, wrestling in the front yard, like luchadori style, and uh, it's really going crazy. Now, you want to come on? Let's go. What do you say? Yeah. Hell yeah. What was like? Would I be the one to go to such a such event? I come and knock would on you your go door on short said, notice. Yeah, yeah, I come and knock on your door all of a sudden and say, "Look, there's a raging party. Come on, let's go. It's right now. It's Saturday afternoon, evening." What do you do? Do you go, come with me or no? Um, if you were some random person, probably not. But if you were a friend, I probably. Well, if it's Eric, I would. You would? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but not if it's spacey, for sure, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just teasing. I Just know, man. I'm already hard. Yeah, Spacey, Spacey knows how to party. Right? <laughs> Spacey's like California. He knows how to party. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's see. Um, if I were to ask you to name, give me five different words that mean uh, log. Can you come up with five different words that mean log? Five different words that mean log? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, hmm. That mean log? Yeah, like synonyms for log. Oh. Um a stick, tree, uh bench. <laughs> okay. I'm about to get exposed. Uh Bark. Okay. Um, um, can you tell me five words that rhyme with log? Fog, jog, dog, hog. Okay. Uh, now, let's say I've got a new product. It's a combination sitting log and uh, sewing bench. It's got a sewing machine attached to it, but it's a log, so it's made to sew outside in the wilderness, for example. But I can't, I can't figure out a good name for my product. Can you help me think of some good names for my product that's half sitting log and half um, sewing machine that you push your foot down on? It goes. Uh. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Suck at stuff like this. Uh, a name? Yeah. What's a good name for my product? The only thing I can think of as a good product name is combination sitting log sewing machine. But they tell me in marketing that that's not going to sell. 
Um, sitting log. The sitting logger. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that's fine. Um, so let's ask a couple of SI questions. Is there anybody in your life that you have periodic disputes with? Maybe about something minor, like my roommate or my housemate always leaves the refrigerator door open or something like that. Something minor that you have repeated conflicts with somebody about? Um, probably my grandma. I live with my grandma, so I probably get into little, little uh, disputes, I guess, with her. But I guess it wouldn't be necessarily like what she does, but more of her trying to get me to do certain things that I don't want to do. <laughs> uh, can you give me an so, example? Um, a lot of times she'll she'll try to get me to do. Uh, and I get really impatient because if I'm if I'm doing something, there's a reason behind it. So I don't I don't like when people interrupt my plan i guess for the day or whatever i'm working on i don't like to be interrupted by by something external so she might say something so. like dj i need you to go <laughs> to the library and return these books yeah. i checked out <laughs> and, and, exactly. that'll, and that'll bother you okay yeah yeah because yeah. you got other things planned you're in the middle of playing the guitar for example exactly there we go Okay, you're right. You, you play the guitar, I see. Yeah, yep. Do you play mostly covers, or do you write your own music? Uh, I a little of both. I've written like four of my own songs, but I do a lot of other other songs as well, like cover songs. What's a song that you think is a good, well-written song that I might be familiar with? That you might be familiar with, uh. Do you know any of John Mayer? Yeah. Uh, uh, probably Slow Dancing in a Burning Room. Those are probably two of my favorite songs. Um, you know that song, uh, I don't, I could, I only heard one of the two names you said, but do you know the song, um, Somebody Stop This Train? You know that one? It sounds familiar. It's like, uh, it talks about, getting older and the only thing he knows how to do well is being young and then yeah 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 it that, sounds that's a really good John Mayer so that, yes that one I've always found very like resonant and uh, also just really well written he's a good songwriter that's yeah a, that's a good a he good is. choice to mention for a songwriting prowess yeah. Spacey you got a couple yep. questions yeah um what kind of a person were you in high school? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Uh, I feel like I was pretty against the grain. Like, if popular, but like if 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 there was like stereotypes surrounding popularity, I would try to break out from that. So, I was associated with the sports group. But I would willingly get up and sit with people that weren't as quote unquote as popular as I was, right. just because I I wanted to always kind of go against the grain in a way. Right. So I would consider myself in high school as kind of like a a nonconformist who's pretty distracted <laughs> and not really uh, as engaged edu in, in in regards to education as I probably should have been. So. All right. Um. So were you were you good at sports? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, which, which sports did you play? I played baseball, basketball, and football. What position okay. did you play in football? I was tight end. Are you? I was too slow for my receiver. Are you over six feet tall? <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's cool. That must have been fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yep. I I really enjoyed it. I'm a. I like physical contact, so that was. That was an outlet for me to kind of actually be able to use that in a productive way. So in the team, though, what kind of a role do you usually end up playing, like, socially within a sports team? Uh, 
usually the like the leader, but I don't do it because I like leadership. Usually, uh, it finds you. You don't not, find it. Yeah, like I don't try to like. I'm not the thirsty. Like I want to be the team captain. I used to like. People that were like that, I was like, you guys are just thirsty for it. Um, but no, leadership kind of followed me in in regard, like in sporting circles, I guess. What about in other social circles? Uh that's still pretty accurate. Um, again, I still consider myself kind of like a nonconformist. So uh, well, people you can be usually a do, and, and still be uh, like an alpha leader archetype, sort of. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I guess I don't know. I mean, I usually go along. I usually go along with what people want, unless it's conflicting with my immediate desires. Like, if I want to go somewhere else to eat or whatever, I'm like, well, I'm definitely going to assert my opinion just because that's still me, like, in a way, trolling the environment in a sense, I guess. But. Okay, so wait, did you say controlling the environment? Huh? I'm I'm sorry, I was distracted for a second. So you you were mentioned controlling the environment. Uh huh. Okay. In what way exactly? Like, can you go into that in more detail? So, um, for me, like if. Like if we're gonna if if I'm with a group of friends and everyone's like let's go to eat, a lot of times my friends would be like, well I don't care when we go to eat or whatever, and I usually assert where I want to go because I feel like if I don't do that then there's not going to be a decision at all. Right. Um. But if I feel like people are actually going to arrive at a consensus, then I kind of just I trust that it'll eventually lead to some place that we're gonna decide on. So okay. I kind of gauge that. But. Now you're um, you're a handsome young man. Well, I, thank you. I, I imagine that you you probably being a, being in sports and being seeming seeming quite socially graceful as well. Being a handsome young man, you probably had your choice of the uh, lady friends in high school. How much advantage did you take from that? How did I manage to what? I'm I mean, sorry. I, I said, you. how much advantage did you take of that? Not really a lot. Um, a lot of it was just like I don't want to. I didn't want to be distracted from like sports so i mean I, I was a high school idiot so i did high school idiot things but i wasn't i wasn't so much as like girl chasing as some of my other friends but so hmm. that's what i would say okay all right do you, are you in college now or are you out of college or did you go to college i wasn't i was in college uh and then i had some serious like life events happen so i like dropped out and then now i'm working full-time for fedex so how do you oh, like cool. that uh i like it uh, um it definitely engages me physically uh because some of those boxes are freaking heavy so but i would i i feel like i'm actually going back to school because i i feel like in order to like open my options um, in regards to like career stuff, I have to, I, ha well, I don't have to have a degree, but I'm definitely going to open up my options if I have a degree. So that's what I'm trying to work towards right now. I like the FedEx suitcases full of lead. <laughs> just, to fuck, just to fuck with the people who work at the warehouse. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, have you ever thought of like picking up a trade or something? Yeah, uh, I was thinking about doing HVAC, like the air heating and yeah, air conditioning. One. I know yeah. I've been an electrician myself, so I, yeah. Oh, sweet, sweet. Uh, yeah, so I've thought about doing that. Okay, so when you were in college, what sort of thing were you studying? Uh, my freshman year, I studied IT, and then. Um, the year following, I studied uh, business management. Are you so. in a band? No. Nah. Do you play uh, live ever? No, I've played at a couple weddings, but other than that, I don't. I don't really go out and play. Do you want but, to? If if there was somebody pulling you out to go play more, would you be happy to do it? Yeah, I would do that. 
Um, I feel like I need to improve my voice a little bit better, but yeah, I definitely would. I definitely would do that. I think so, it'd be fun. So you play and sing at the same time? Yeah. And you learn songs yep. mostly. You don't just uh, you don't just like play leads or something. Yeah, I learn learn the songs. Cool. That's a better way to play for sure. Yeah. I, I never understood those INTJs who spend all this time learning how to play shredding lead guitar. It's like, what in the hell is the point? Right? <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to hear that shit. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, okay, let's test your SI a little bit more, huh, Spacey? You, you want to tell Yeah, we got to get rid of it. Why don't you tell him the story of your morning in sequential events? Okay, so I woke up way too early this morning, and my girlfriend was, like, bugging me and shit because she was, I don't know, tripping over something, right? And I just wanted to go back to sleep, and eventually I went back to sleep. And, and then I woke up again, and then it was time for breakfast and Saturday morning cartoons. So we went down to the lobby to get breakfast and, you know, I stepped outside to smoke what was left of my weed and, you know, went back inside and ate breakfast. And then we got some coffee and we got back in the elevator and we went upstairs and, you know, passed all the housekeeping ladies back to our room. And then we kind of chilled for a while and we took a shower, shaved and all that business. And then, uh, by then, I was trying to get into a typing session around, like, 2 o'clock today, but, like, this guy was, he didn't want to just see me, he wanted to see Eric, so, you know, I had to reschedule him, and then, so I played some video games and listened to music until... All right, that's time. good. All right, so, first of all, <laughs> how painful was it for you listening to that story? <laughs> uh pretty painful no offense to to his uh wife and oh, that's but... exactly why i told it that way <laughs> okay now can you <laughs> can you do the same thing for your morning yeah i can i maybe let's see um so mine's a little, a little morbid actually okay let's get it so okay i woke up this morning and brushed my teeth after that i made coffee and then i Read for like how long did I read for? Like maybe fifteen minutes, and then after that, I played video games, and then <laughs> this is the morbid part. But I went to take my dog to get put down. So <laughs> oh shit! Um, yeah. Oops. So, you had a good so that happened. Life, though? happened. Yeah, she lit. She, she was like she was the best. Oh, cool. I'm sorry to hear but, that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I got I got some equivalently dark news, which is uh, Kimberly had to put Red down yesterday. I knew Red Aww. was getting sick before I left. I could tell she wasn't herself. Anyway, uh, she was egg bound and she had to put her down. So, Officer Red is no more. Dang. Um, anyway, enough of the sadness. That's interesting. You're able to do the sequential details. Okay, when's the last time you went to a restaurant? A restaurant? Uh, today. Before today. What about before that? Yeah. Oh. Um. Oh. Fuck. fuck. Uh. What's today? I don't even know what today is. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. I can't. Maybe or like Monday. Maybe I can't like nail down the exact day. Do you remember okay. what restaurant it was? What restaurant? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, Taco Bell. I think. Okay. Do you remember what you got or anything that happened while you were there? Uh, I got three beef chalupas because I get that every single time. <laughs> Good taste. <laughs> yeah. Right. Dude, they just have these new toasted cheddar chalupas. They are the best thing they've ever had on the fucking menu. Dude. Yeah. Chatter chalupas? Toasted That's a game cheddar. They're toasted as well. Ooh. Yeah. I might get that after this. crunchy and shit, yeah. Anyway. Damn. 
If I were to give you five poems, would you be able to tell me which is the best poem? Five poems? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. If you felt like you were clear on which was the best poem, would you? do you think you'd be able to explain why? Yeah. Yeah. What would be some of the things you might say about what makes one poem better than another? Um... Probably the, <clears throat> I guess it's, that would be <sighs> this, the, the, the way that it's styled, I guess, stylistically, if one poem is more uh, deep, I guess you could say that I probably think that one's better, I guess. Do you feel like you'd be more qualified if I gave you five songs to tell which was no. better? Probably not. I think you'd be the same qualified to tell f between five songs and five poems? Probably less. Less qualified on songs? Yeah. So do you have a lot of history writing? Or do you just feel like poems are easier uh, to understand? I feel like they're easier to understand. Because I read a lot too, so that's probably why I would say that. Yeah, okay. Have you ever done any writing? Yes. In like school? Not like or? but I do write blogs. I write like logs. Okay. What do you write yeah, about? I mean, a lot of stuff. Um, I write a lot of like intellectual jargon, philosophy crap. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. So you spend a lot of time thinking about like philosophical tar topics. Yeah. So I've like kind of jumped around from different areas of study for the past like six or seven years um and it's i don't know there's been like different things that have kind of sparked my interest and i i go in depth with with those things that i that I, that interest me so philosophy is one of them that has been which how would you define truth how do i define yeah how would you define truth what's the definition of truth uh truth is that which corresponds to reality Okay. What about uh, what about uh, identity? How do you define identity? Identity. Um, something that damn hard. Something that that embodies your existence, uh, I guess. I don't know. Do you have a firm sense of your That's own kind of identity? Embodies yeah. your personality. Huh? So do you have a firm sense of your own identity? Yes. Okay. And what would you say that's comprised of? Um, I guess, well, so I'm also a Christian, so that kind of adds a different dimension to it, so... I would say that, that my identity is rooted in my belief in God as being a son. At okay. least, so say. <laughs> do you think you have a specific destiny that God has intended for you and your job is to figure out what it is or yeah. something else? No, I feel like he has a, a plan for my life. And so I, I commit myself to that. Okay. Do you, do you how clear do you feel on what that plan is? Uh some days <laughs> some days it's different. I, I would say for the most part I'm I'm pretty fairly confident in that plan, but I would say other days I I waver. What's more but, important, humility or forgiveness? Humility. What's the worst sin? <laughs> the worst sin. I would, I would say, at least theologically, there, there is. I well, no, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is technically the worst sin. So rejecting the Holy Spirit. Okay, I've had another Christian discuss this with me and indicate that he thought that pride was the worst sin. I'm sure that. Uh, you. I'm sorry. You, you can make the pride of sin, but I wouldn't say that pride is the worst. Okay. Um, I think that pride is, 
I think it probably is specific to how how one is tempted by a given sense or not. You know, it's like it depends on your you as the individual. For some people, gluttony is not a problem, right? And for some people, it is. Right. So whether or not that's going to be a bad sin for you is going to be specific to whether or not your kind of temptation, I guess, or something. Right. For sure. For sure. Um. So, how have you always been a Christian? Uh, no, I, I, I was probably like fifteen when I started following Jesus. And is there a specific reason why you made that decision? Oh, uh, a specific reason. I guess I, it wasn't. I realized that that the course of my life wasn't. Um, heading in the direction that I thought it, it should be, and so like following Jesus gave me an understanding of direction and identity and, and meaning. And so, when I realized that, that's when I started following him. Right. It allowed so you, you to... stumbled into that on your own. Uh no, not no. I, it's more indirect. Like my sister started following the Lord a while ago, and then she kind of introduced me to Christianity, and then through her, I kind of found that vessel, if you will. (laughs) Amen. So, yeah, I'm... Let's see here. Are you political at all? Mm, Not really. Really. I mean, I, I, I like you follow understanding politics. Politics. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you ever get into debates with people about things, or yes, do you avoid that? Oh, okay. No, I love debates. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so, do you, Jenny? Do you really like arguing with people then? <clears throat> yeah, very much okay. so. I love it. Okay. Do you just like the intellectual rigor of it? Everything. I, I feel like it's like chess to me. Okay. It's even though I don't know how to play chess in my mind, it's like if I can if I can systematically break down someone's argument um and defend my own, to me I, I just love that. Like my dad is we would debate for over everything for for, for four years. Okay. And so yeah, I'm just like low key trained to debate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so have you watched a lot of the typing sessions that we've done? I've seen uh, like three or four of them. Okay, so, so you've seen us do the TI questions. Yes. Do you? How do you do with those? Do you try to do them yourself? Like, do you uh, do well on them? I don't do well on them. <laughs> okay. I don't. I <laughs> well, no, that's that's helpful though. Because that way we don't really have yeah. to necessarily bother with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, how, how, how many hours of sleep do you get a night? Probably like eight. Seven or eight. How many do you think you need? Probably need? Probably six and a half. Okay. Do you sometimes let yourself get to Function, probably. Do you sometimes forget to eat? Oh, yeah. A lot. I can go like 16 hours with eating. Okay, yeah. And just forget. Like at work, I don't eat, I don't even eat. I just kind of keep going. Well, how do you know when you need to eat? Um, I mean, if I get super hungry, that's when I'm like, okay, I probably should eat something. But, but you must or if get I start hungry. thinking about how long I've gone. You must get hungry long What's before... That? It sounds like there must be times where you get hungry long before you actually end up eating. So, yes. So, like, are you not aware of it? Are you just ignoring it? Well, I guess I wouldn't say I'm not aware. I yeah, I just pretty much ignore it. Okay. So I guess I would be aware that I'm hungry, but I don't. Do you hold your pee too long? (laughs) Not for real. I mean, like when I'm working, because I'm always in the truck, so I can't. It's either piss in a bottle or get out and piss in the street or something. So it's like. I just I just don't worry about it. I just keep going. Right. 
Okay, so so you hold it, but not too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm still human. I'm not. A, I'm not a robot like crazy. Like, how long can I hold this piss? Like, <laughs> right. Um, okay. Uh, My record is six hours. Do you currently six have six hours? I'm just kidding. Do you currently have a significant other? <laughs> I do. What are the things that she provides for you that you like the most and the things that she does that you don't like the most? <laughs> uh, what what she provides that I like the most? Probably her ability to make me actually talk about real things. I feel like I have a tendency to kind of like close off emotionally and she is really is the opposite and she's a lot more emotionally aware of things. Things that she does or that that I don't like that she does. I feel like she's naturally a happy go lucky person, and so and I'm like, I'm more serious. So sometimes I'm just kind of like, ah, I need you to calm down. That all that joy, happiness, I need to. <laughs> I just need to be pissed right now. Okay. So, um, is she very outgoing? Yes, very much so. Is she more outgoing than you? Yeah. And so, who's like she? Is she more likely than you to say, "Let's go to a party"? Yes, no doubt. <laughs> and are you likely to go, no but somewhat reluctantly, or not go? Um, I'll go if it's people that I don't really care that much about. I'll probably be like, "Yeah, that's stupid." But for the most part, I would go. Oh, yeah. Okay. When what you if- say she's more? Emotionally aware? What do you mean exactly? Um, I guess that might not have been the best. I, I I guess I would say she's more emotionally, she's more sensitive than I am, and she's also more vulnerable emotionally. So she's more comfortable talking about emotional things, whereas I'm kind of like closed oh, okay. off and kind of guarded. Right. So. Um, if you went to a party with her and you got there and it turned out everybody was playing Twister. Would you want to leave? <laughs> I'll probably stay for that. I like Twister. Okay. <laughs> All right. How about how about if everybody was doing the limbo? Would you be okay with that? Or do you want? <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna hurt uh, your back. That's gonna hurt your back. Yeah, I would probably like this Twister. That's too much. That, that's the, that's the end of that. Okay. All right. Um, I think we really do need to ask a couple TI questions. It sounds like Spacey was asking you how you did on the TI questions normally. Is that what was happening? He said not very good. So I, I'm thinking... Well, let's ask a couple anyway, okay? So yeah, let's, we'll see. Yeah. let's start simple. Uh, can you tell me who my mother's husband's only son is? <laughs> Your mother's... Oh, my gosh. My mother's husband's only son. Your mother's... Uh, all right let's uh, ask you a different kind of question Uh, if joe and bob both go out tonight then mary will stay home yeah if mary stays home then she will perform a dark ritual but if joe and bob if either joe or bob stays home tonight then Mary will not perform the ritual because she has to be alone. Now, it turns out that Joe is placed under house arrest this afternoon and has to stay home. What can we conclude about Mary? What the f- Oh, my God. Uh, fuck, dude. This is so embarrassing. It, don't be embarrassed. I don't know. Look, let, me, let me stress yeah, something. Don't be embarrassed about it. <laughs> Let me stress. It's very useful. This is very useful, but it's also (laughs) indicative of the fact that we just can't operate um, in a world that continues to prioritize being able to answer dumbass questions like that as meaning intelligence, right? It's it's fundamentally a form of ontological assault upon everybody who's ti polar. Um, So it's Mm. it's it's like. There's no reason to think that that kind of thinking, TI, is equal to intelligence at all. Yeah. Half of all of logic has to do with specific systems, and that doesn't have anything to do with TI at all. 
So it's like it uh-huh. it makes me reflect just how much ontological violence we do to people based on their attentional channels. You happen to have TI in the seventh slot. Mm-hmm. Big fucking whoop, you know? So what? Everybody's got a blind spot. Yours is something society says, the school yeah. says, school says it's important. My blind spot, which is actually much more important, really, in life, which is my own feelings and what's authentic to me and what matters and stuff, is much more significant. But school never says anything to me about how I need to be more in touch with my feelings, right? So it's, I think it's important right. to, to spend a moment saying that again and again, that there's nothing wrong with you. You're just an example of a type that happens to have a testable polar. Not all polars are testable. You can't exactly test for mine in the same way. You can't expose me like that because FI is too, I don't know. I haven't figured out how to do it anyway. I mean, SE yeah. polar is, is pretty exposing. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, space, yeah, space E can't. <laughs> Like you are a That's do- one you don't even have to, to test for. <laughs> um, let me go smoke yeah, that makes part sense, of though. a cigarette. I'll be I always... right back. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it seems like we're, we both come to the conclusion that you're uh, an ESFP. Oh, really? So, yeah. Dang, ESFP. Interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. But um, I never I'll, thought I'll wait for him to come back for a second. But I mean, I don't know what okay. you think about that. <laughs> That's nuts. I definitely didn't think that. Why not? I I thought that I was a, an ENTJ for a while. Or maybe 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 a, an ENFP. I don't know if he really tested the Probably not though. You're Interesting. Your SI is uh, fourth, fifth is hard to test for, so I, I'm gonna have to talk to him a little more about that. But okay. Hmm. That's crazy. I think if you were an ENFP, you wouldn't have found that so painful when I when I explained my morning. That's kind of what's coming up. <laughs> yeah. I know SE Dom people are usually like, they're the ones who are like roll their eyes around me and my friends going like, what the fuck are you stoners talking about? (laughs) So Spacey, do you and I agree on on the type here? I think so. You're probably ESFP, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, But the thing is, I'm guessing it's quite possible that you came in thinking you were something else. A lot of people come in with having read some type descriptions of ESFP um, and concluded that they don't want to be one or that there's something else. And so we certainly want to hear what you thought you were coming in and if you have any objections to that or if there's anything we can clarify or, or talk about that will uh, explain the type to you as well, much as we can. I was talking to him for a second. He said basically ENTJ, I think, which isn't it's really actually not far off at all because it's the other extrovert in the same quadra right. with the same function. Right. So you got the functions right, wrong order. Wrong order. Yeah. Yeah. Because a TE DOM is, um, they have, well, the ENTJs are pretty easy to tell. They've got that SI polar for one thing. You don't have SI polar. You're actually pretty good at, remembering things, and you can almost see it turn conscious when you're called upon to use it in typical six-slot function. Uh, in t- fashion, mm-hmm. I mean, six-slot fashion. If you ask somebody to demonstrate their six-slot function, they pull it out and they demonstrate it, just as you did when we asked you about the SI stuff. Um, but it uh-huh. also they also don't value it. So it's like you get enough sleep, and you hold your pee, and you don't eat and stuff, because you don't value SI in and of itself. You don't want to apply it in your own life. But if asked yeah. to just asked to demonstrate it, you'll demonstrate it because it's your demonstrative function. Huh. That's interesting. And no, wait a second. That's not. That's not his demo- What are you? I'm are you sorry. Up right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I did mess up. Me? No, I messed up. I screwed up. I was thinking uh, about uh, ISFP. Um, you're an ESFP. It's ignoring. So I guess the thing is, like in any four or five, it's hard to tell it where it is in the slot in the stack. 
Four fives are consistently difficult to tell. They don't really inform you anything about the person. Six slot, demonstrative, uh -huh. can look like fifth slot. You know, it depends. The thing is, if you've got uh, eight slot extroverted intuition, um, that's consistent with your extroverted intuition answers, which were which were like examples of introverted intuition in other ways. Like you never went to log as in any other definition other than um, the kind of piece of wood thing, right? That, but you yeah. were, but you were able to extrovertedly intuit off of the piece of wood one and come up with different ideas of wood. That's typical right. of like either eight slot or um, maybe six slot uh, extroverted intuition. But I mean, it's certainly consistent with eight slot. The thing that makes it definitive with you is the TI polar. So, um, you know, it's like if you look at five or four, they're not going to tell you much. For you, your fourth uh, slot is uh, introverted intuition. It's seeking. So you want to delegate that largely to other people. It's like you want other people to uh, to give you a clear path that you follow. Like when I ask you, well, what are you doing? Well, I might go to college. I'm currently working for FedEx. I want to do this. I'm not sure. I want to do that. I want to do that. You need an INTJ to tell you what to do, basically. And then you'll you'll go do it because you'll have a clear path that somebody <laughs> else that you trust is provided, etc. That's yeah. the idea. Anyway. So that's crazy. That's dead on. That's dead on. Wow. That's crazy. I totally didn't think that's what I was even remotely close at least from what I've... What well, I, so, well, that's crazy. They're Chase, stereotyped into oblivion. We get, we get ESTPs, ESFPs, and they always think there's something else, and they're like, no way. But like, they're, they're always sold short in the type description. So are the SI DOMs, too. Any of the DOM sensors, mostly. Uh, the other thing I would say is you probably tested intuitive on some online tests. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're interested in intuitive stuff, right? So you've been studying philosophy. Right, right. You've been, I asked you a definition of truth. You've got a, a very uh, empirics based definition of truth, namely consistent with reality, which is also consistent with sort of a third slot TE thing. If you have a, a very empirics based philosophy, and I don't know if it is or not, but you also have uh, a clear uh, faith that sort of, that, that sort of, the faith angle causes a person to manifest somewhat differently than they otherwise would, I think. I think it's important, actually, in development and self-development. I think everybody's got to have, got to invest faith at some point. I, I invest faith in a similar fashion to you, but yeah. other people sometimes get started in the process of investing faith and investing in something worldly that maybe is worth their effort, for example. Like, I'm going to invest my faith that if I work hard at this, I'll succeed or something. That's the kind of faith that uh, can often begin the process of of letting go of that sense of I must be in control of everything and making all the decisions and be willful, which I think runs right, contrary right. which runs contrary to a faith based life, I think. Mm -hmm. Is ESFP uh introverted feeling? Yes. In their first in the gotcha. in the tool function. Okay. And so is that second slot? Yeah it's second yeah. slot. Which, which means you're a, a one one kind of deliberation person like me. Because we have our other kind of deliberation in the polar slot. Which means you always have a clear sense of the weight of things. And the and how it applies to yeah. interested <laughs> calculus. So how important is this? How important is that? Um, how can I talk to this friend of mine about something I need to right. tell them without hurting their feelings? You're very aware of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I'm not so aware of that. I've had to learn to be a lot more aware of Crazy. that because uh, I tend to just be blunt and say things, and and then when someone gets their feelings hurt, historically, I'd be like, <laughs> "What? I just said me, 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 me," you know. Um, so I've had to learn to be a lot kinder as a, as a person and to respect feelings a lot more um, because it's my blind spot. And so for you, your blind spot is those logic questions we ask. It's the other kind of deliberation. The thing is, in life, we largely need introverted feeling more than we need introverted thinking. Introverted thinking is fine if you want to do something like this, right? Where you want to spend your life extroverting to everybody, ideas, and you don't really, uh, 
you're not really attached to the people in a, in a sort of fundamental way that an FI user is. While I'm very friendly and have a lot of friends and stuff, how many really close relationships do I have with people that I care about a lot? Not very many. And, um, you know, it's like I broke up with Kimberly with, with her for two and a half years, and I don't really feel like I've spent more than about 20 total minutes mourning the thing, <laughs> frankly. You know, um, it, it may have made me seem cold or whatever, but that kind of bad, bad blind spot also is why I was in that horrible relationship for as long as I was, you know? Um, it's because I didn't care about my own feelings enough. I yeah. didn't respect the fact that she was saying mean things and hurting my feelings, and I shouldn't put up with that. So it's it's a whole, kind of a horrible blind spot to have. And um, yours, the only thing it's going to preclude you from doing, really, you probably can't be a lawyer because um, <laughs> parsing out legal documents involves a lot of TI. But, you know, uh -huh. other than that, there's not a whole lot of shit in life that requires you to use a lot of TI. So I don't understand why society prioritizes it so much. Well, I think I think ESFPs do right. really damn well. I mean, what what I'm what I've realized about ESFPs is probably more than any other type. They tend not to see any reason to question themselves. They don't they're not burdened so much by conviction, all other things that yeah, it's. And so, like, they just do shit, and they do what they want to do. And, like, you look at someone like my sister who, like, she becomes extremely successful at whatever she was doing, which happened to be the car business, car sales, you know. And they can make sh loads of money. The only problem is they can sometimes lose it just as fast. But. Yeah. Are, are they impulsive? Yeah. They are are certainly ESFPs can pretty be. impulsive? Yeah. Probably the most impulsive. Yeah, I am. Really? Yeah. Fuck. But I'm sure you have... <laughs> It sounds like you've got a much better handle on it than probably most DSFPs your age do. So, you know, congrats. Having faith comes with an understanding of humility that means you step, step back and you say, is this what I, it's, you know, is this what Jesus would do? <laughs> right? There's there's an yeah. element of that that comes along with being, with being walking an increasingly narrow path. It's going to make mm -hmm. you less tragically impulsive than some ESFPs, I suggest. But yeah. um, I would point out also the classic ESFP, the ultimate ESFP of all time, is Naruto. So if you haven't watched Naruto, watch the Naruto Shippuden, and you'll see what an ESFP is, what their superpower is. It's conviction. It's believing in themselves no matter what. Like, yes. And, huh. and, and fighting on to achieve their goal no matter what. And so somebody goes, you're not meow enough to meow. You have exactly two responses to that. Meow and meow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> would, cool. you, would you say that's Dang. accurate about you? Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel like the, the conviction of identity is, is very has always been something that I've always known. Like I know very much who I am and I've, I guess I just didn't think that I was a feeling type over a thinking type. And I know that's a terrible way to explain it. Um, which I guess could be the element of extroverted thinking at play. Um, but yeah, I always thought that I was a, a, a thinker generally over a feeler, uh, at least with that like dichotomy. But that's just that's super interesting though. Well, as you said, as when when you're looking at your two middle functions, right? You got your FI tool and your third slide FE. Like oftentimes your your TE is going to be more uh, outwardly obvious and apparent to people than than your tool FI is. So your SE and your TE are going to be your yeah. most forward looking functions, sort of. And especially as a male, hmm. additionally, you're going to have more social and biological pressures on using your thinking over your feeling. You're also um, going to feel most satisfied when you successfully so use your extroverted thinking to solve problems. That's going to give you right. a great deal of satisfaction. Just like for me, what gives me a great deal of satisfaction mm -hmm. is um, being perceived as likable, being liked, being affirmed, being told praise, stuff like that. That um, FI users usually think of as uh, kind of silly. Like you don't, you probably don't feel a great deal of satisfaction at getting praise, but you're probably willing to give it 
when you feel like it's needed. So if somebody says to you, yeah. DJ, didn't I do a good job? You, you'll have no problem going, yeah, you did a great job, buddy. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you or something like that, right? Yeah, no doubt. But you don't no, expect it. No for, you don't really need it for yourself. No, I've always been one that's kind of like, don't, don't lift me up. I don't need that. Like, I don't. Right. I'll need to. I almost don't like it in a way. Probably almost insulting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, don't, don't butter my toast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like I'll butter my yeah, goddamn like, toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Dang. Uh, um, okay, so uh, you know we've got a couple minutes left here. If you want to uh, clarify any any other issues or ask any questions or direct conversation here a little bit. Yeah. Um, what would be a a good career path? for someone that has my type like a few options there's too many honestly dude there's too many different fucking things that an ESFP can do but like I would say something like what my sister did would be a great example it's something that ESFPs can be very good salespeople mm. um, but they also have that third slot TE especially after they work it out enough to you know do all the number crunching and all the you know, knowing how I can, you know, cut this thing out here to make a little bit of money on the side, you know, that that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and so I, I would say, yeah, probably sales would be a good thing or really any largely TE, like logistics focused pursuit that also allows you to engage uh, charismatically you with people be in, order, in order to further your, your goal. Like ENFPs, ESFPs make good entrepreneurs if they can get yes. somebody to help with the NI a bit. So for you gotcha. guys, um, ENFPs have better natural NI. If you were to hook up with an INTJ partner of some sort or an ENTJ partner who would help with the NI part, like which singular path ought we direct ourselves or my, my solvency attention to, then you'd be better able to solve the problems yourself so you know which problems to solve better. And so ultimately, for you to be a successful entrepreneur would be most enabled by getting an INTJ partner of some sort who's got a, a really good business idea and wants to find somebody who who can, you know, team up with them to do a lot of legwork stuff that you could accomplish. What basically whatever you firmly believe you can accomplish and you once you've got a path that's clear in your head and you're like, I firmly believe this and my conviction will not change then you're basically unstoppable at that. At the moment, you're you're an unstoppable force in search of a path. Mm, that's so... You know what? Yeah, that's crazy. That's literally what just happened to my sister, too. She she She's with this guy. They're getting married, right? He was in the car business, too. I'm not sure what type he is, but the point is, now they're starting their own car business. And Damn. The, the, the path is clear, right? They, they both know what they're good at. And they're being entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's the perfect situation for an ESFP like her, especially because she's still in like her early thirties. Dang. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I got a lot of studying to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is you decide you want to apply yourself to, I'm sure you'll be very successful at it. Oh would, yeah, like I, I said, once you figure out what you want to do. There are certain kinds of academia I would stay away from, but um, other than that, I'm quite sure you'll apply yourself to something that you do find both satisfying and offers you the opportunity to solve some problems because that's going to give you a lot of satisfaction and um, and just you know takes advantage of your ability to follow through on things too. You may be impulsive, but as an SE DOM, you have an inherent ability to follow through on a list of things and check them off that list, right? And get shit done. And yeah. it's something that NTPs like Spacey and I just don't have. I mean, if if we had a little bit of, of you know, fucking handle around here, I'm sure we'd be doing a lot better. <laughs> but sometimes I'll suggest notions to Spacey and I'll go like, yeah, that's a good notion. And then that's where it sits right there, you know. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. Well, thanks, fellas. I definitely, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm convinced on that. I mean, the, un, the unstoppable, unstoppable force that needs guidance. I'm like that. 
I'm gonna get a fucking T-shirt with that or something. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Just, just find you the right it. INTJ and you're golden. Gotcha. I'll All be right. a workout. Is it cool with you <laughs> if we publish this video or you prefer? Absolutely. We... All right, great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yep. Talk for to sure. you.